Welcome to the Tape Library. Tonight I'm bringing you a bunch of brand new stories from people who have encountered something that they believe is paranormal. All stories are read in the experience's own words, and you can find links to their accounts in the description if you wish to delve in deeper to any of these tales. These stories have taken us all around the world tonight, and I'm very excited to bring them to you. A huge thank you to all those who agree to let me share their experiences. If you have your own paranormal experience to share, then please do get in touch. You can find my email address in the description below. So get yourself a warm drink, turn down those lights, and get comfortable. The first of our creepy experiences tonight takes us to Scotland. I don't believe in ghosts. If I see someone I don't know and trust, like on TV for example, telling a ghost story, I struggle to believe them. That being said, I had an experience when I was around 10 years old that I'm going to share today. This was in approximately 2003. My friend and I were walking to football training. I live in a quiet countryside town in Scotland. To get to the football training we would walk past the tennis courts as it saved a lot of time. The tennis courts are located at the bottom of a wide open grassy area. Next to the tennis courts is a sloped section of ground that runs the length of the court. I think it's meant to be the stand where people can sit and watch. It's sort of like a grassy pyramid that's been stretched out in length. There is a path that leads down to the stand and just stops. On the far side of the stand is a small wooded area. We were on the path walking towards the tennis courts. It was broad daylight. No one is around. The wooded area briefly falls out of view as the path is on a slight decline. We walk up the hill of the stand onto the main body of it. And there is a woman standing at the trees. She is stood with her hands clasped in front of her looking directly at us. My friend and I are walking towards her. She is stood between a fence and a small stream that's guarded by a waist-high fence. We walk the length of the court, now less than 10 metres from her, and she hasn't moved. She just continued to stand and stare. We turn at the bottom of the court now with our back to her. We haven't said a word, but we looked at each other and ran. The woman was grey in appearance, but wasn't transparent or anything. She looked like a real person, but she was sort of uniform colour, washed out looking, clothes included. It's quite hard to describe. She didn't move once, and I don't mean she just stood still. She didn't move at all. She was three dimensional, but it was like she was a cutout that had been placed there. My first thought wasn't, oh my god, it's a ghost. Only afterwards did we realize what might have just happened. There is nowhere this woman could have come from. There are two meter fences blocking everywhere apart from the far side entrance to the tennis court and the approach we used to get there. The far side entrance line of sight is never broken. The stand only obscures a part of the wooded section for a moment. She simply was not there. We broke line of sight for 5 to 10 seconds. And there she was. The village I live in is small. I have never seen this person before. And I haven't seen her since. For a good 10 years that area would terrify me at night. I would hug the fence until I had to turn my back to the area we saw her, at which point I would run. Doesn't matter how muddy the grass was, it was genuinely too frightening to care about the condition of my shoes. I don't know how to explain this. I tell people I don't believe in ghosts if they ask, but I always offer this story as a consolation. Looking back on it I wish I'd spent more time looking at her. As it was happening, 
despite not realising what I was potentially looking at. The unbroken eye contact was unsettling. It made it difficult to look at her. That friend and I don't speak anymore. We haven't for around 15 years. I bumped into him in town about four years ago. The first question I asked him once the greetings were over and done with was, remember we saw that ghost? He said, I do mate, aye. I'm deep into the research and writing phases for the next two entries into the tape library. In the next episode we're going to be exploring a location in Europe that has some absolutely insane stories connected to it. We're going to be getting heavily into the world of high strangeness. We also have another visit to a really interesting haunted house case on the horizon. So if you don't want to miss out, then please consider subscribing. Our next encounter takes us to Australia, where someone spent 12 months living in what they think may have been a haunted apartment. When I was in my first year out of school, my older brother and I moved into a small two-story apartment in Scarborough, Western Australia. It was relatively cheap and in a great location, with the only drawback being that the apartment seemed half finished in places. There were quite a few outdoor areas that were crumbling away, and even some of the walls in the upstairs area had sections of the wall unpainted. We were apparently the first tenants since the renovation. Our parents would come and stay with us from time to time, and we still talk about our weird experiences in that place today. It always had an eerie feeling to it, with random rooms at odd angles and a very uncomfortable aura, for want of a better word. The biggest feeling I had at the time was that I always felt like I was going to look down the staircase from the top living area and see someone run past. I don't know why I even thought that, but my parents said it was one of the first things that I said to them about the place. It all started one Friday night, when I was staying home with my mum. We were both sitting on the couch watching TV at around 9pm, with only the lampshade and the kitchen light on. We both felt something really odd that I've never felt before or since. Like all of the air was being sucked out of the room, or there was a pressure change or something similar. We felt like we couldn't move, and it was like we were stuck in place. A shadow then appeared on the wall to the back left of the TV, about the size of a small person, but almost just looked like a blob in a vague shape of a human. It moved diagonally up the wall to the left, as if it were climbing a set of stairs, and then disappeared and we spent the rest of the nights in hysterics, leaving the house until my brother and dad returned a few hours later. What must have been a few weekends later, another encounter occurred. I had just been at the cinema watching a film with some friends. The film was White Noise, which was around 2005, and it was based on hearing ghosts speak to you through the static of an untuned radio. It was a pretty average movie, but an interesting idea. That night while asleep in my bed, my clock radio turned on max volume, right next to my head at about 1am. It was 10 seconds of chaos as I tried to turn off the radio alarm, but nothing was turning off the sound. In my half asleep state I didn't think to pull it out of the wall. After about 10 seconds it finally turned off. I somehow went back to sleep. I remember at the time knowing that it was the scariest thing that had ever happened to me and that I had just encountered something. The next morning, I woke up to find the cord for the alarm clock in the middle of the room under my bed, nowhere near the wall. Not long after that encounter, we had some friends around for some drinks in our main living room and had another incident. An old CD player of my brother's was sitting on the table and turned on max volume all of a sudden, playing with weird Indian sitar sounding music. Needless to say it scared the hell out of everyone in the room. 
if not only because of the loud noise out of nowhere. At another point during the night, the sound of a girl screaming came from upstairs and was eventually explained away by one of my friends as coming from a neighbour's house. Even though it felt like it was directly above us. Another instance occurred on an evening when my mum was staying with us and my brother and dad were away. We had a table tennis table in our garage that was connected to the house through the laundry. I had fallen asleep on the couch and woke up at around 2am. I went to the laundry to have a drink of water from the tap and could hear people playing table tennis beyond the door to the garage. I was basically frozen in fear. I put my ear right up to the door and could hear the sounds of a game being played but I knew that myself and mum were the only ones in the apartment. I retreated and went to bed knowing that I was too weak to open the door and confront whatever was in there. I somehow fell asleep. The next morning I woke up and went downstairs for breakfast. The first thing mum says to me is, How late were you and your friends up playing table tennis last night? I got up to go to the toilet at 3am and could hear a game going on in there. So that was pretty spine tingling. The last story that I can think of at the moment is when I was at a friend's house one night and received a phone call from my brother at home. As I answered, he said, How drunk are you? I can hear you rattling the keys in the door. I explained that I was at a friend's house, to which he replied, Shit, and hung up. He calls me back five minutes later and explained that as soon as he hung up, he heard what sounded like a large animal run along the side of the house from the front, along the side fence, and within seconds was knocking aggressively at the back door. He went to the back door, and there was nothing there. I'm sure there are other instances of what we've experienced. This is all I can remember at the moment. Does anyone have any ideas as to what we're dealing with here? Next up, we're off to California for a short but chilling childhood account. If you are enjoying these stories, then please consider hitting the like button. Every time you do, it helps spread these stories to more and more people. Small things like this help support the tape library massively. It means I can keep bringing you more and more real-life paranormal tales. This took place in the early 2000s, during the beginning of my second grade going into my third grade year of schooling. We had just moved to a small town in California and I was having a hard time transitioning and making friends at this new school. The local kids essentially segregated me from the student body and quite frankly I was fine with it at this point. A couple weeks had passed and I was tired of playing alone. So I walked over to this kid who I had noticed playing in the sandbox. I genuinely expected him to brush me off, but to my surprise he was extremely friendly. He had this strange obsession with playing with these green looking bees that would tunnel in the sand. At first I was afraid, but he assured me they were friendly and that we could essentially make little tunnels and mazes in the sand so they could have adventures. Months passed and people started giving me weird looks. I paid no mind at all. All I could think about was going to recess to play with my new friend. Recess came and I finally decided to ask him for his name. He looked around and in a hushed tone whispered to me, My name is Gabriel, but please don't tell anyone that we hang out. This completely caught me off guard and in a way hurt my feelings. After that day I didn't see him again for a while. My second grade year came to an end and the third grade began. Once again I found myself having a hard time with this new group of kids. It got to the point where I was done trying to make friends. Recess couldn't come fast enough. I walk out of class and boom, I see Gabriel in the sandbox. 
so I ran up to him. He didn't look surprised at all, he just waved me over and we started playing again. Weeks go by and we're in the middle of playing with the bees as usual when we noticed an office aide making their way towards us. Gabriel looked panicked and told me, act like I don't exist, once again catching me off guard. I got brought to the office for a meeting involving my principal, my mother and both my second and third grade teachers. I was concerned until my mother asked me, who are you talking to during recess? The question confused me, but I answered anyway. I told her I was playing with my friend Gabriel. She had a concerned look on her face and looked back at my principal, who looked pale for some strange reason. My principal asked me the same question, to which I replied with the same answer. Now both teachers and principal are looking worried. They asked me not to go back to the sandbox anymore. I couldn't play with Gabriel anymore. This struck me to my core. This was my only friend in the last year and a half, and now I can't play with him? Why? Well, I listened, and a few years later I decided to ask my mum about the conference we had, and she was shocked that I remembered she explained everything. Apparently almost 10 years prior, a little boy named Gabriel had passed away after getting stung by a bee in the sandbox. He was actually severely allergic to bees. The teachers knew I had a hard time making friends, so I guess they watched me during recess and noticed that I'd been talking to myself. They got to the point where they were concerned enough to finally figure out what I was doing. Long story short, I was playing with a kid who had passed away. This bothered the principal so much that they renovated the sandbox, and I never saw him again. Normally I'd be spooked by something of this nature, but in this case I only found myself grateful to him for the memories. Shout out to my spooky friend Gabriel for reaching his hand out when I felt so alone. Rest in peace Gabriel. Another childhood experiencer came forward to provide this next tale. This isn't the only experience that this person has had, but it was the first that they could remember, and it all starts on their birthday. My fourth birthday came, and I can remember the excitement of the coming party and fun to be had. Mum was putting the final touches on my birthday cake. Of course, I was getting to lick everything. Best day ever until the phone rang. My mum's mum was calling to tell my mum that her dad had passed away. We watched my mum cry, then we all got ready and walked down the trail to where my granddad lived to join the rest of the family and console each other at this tragic but not unforeseen end of life. He had been sent home from the hospital a week before because there was nothing that could be done. The county came and took him away that day but I don't think he ever left because that night something came in the darkness. We had all laid down to sleep that night and I was almost asleep when we all heard it. Something was walking in the yard. We lived out in the country and along dirt roads. They used to put oil on it to keep the dust down if they remembered the road was there. We didn't have any type of air conditioning so we left the windows open and sometimes the doors. Normally you hear small animals going through the yard, but this was no small animal walking tonight. My mum got up and started going from window to window, trying to catch a glimpse of what was happening. We followed her, me and my oldest brother, but neither her or us could see anything, but we could hear it. And it was getting closer to the house every minute as those footsteps kept getting louder. We could hear the bushes out in the woods moving around too. It kept circling until finally it was close enough to scratch at one of the window screens. That's when mum turned on all the lights in the house and it went quiet. Mum went outside because dad wasn't home. He drove a truck and was gone most of the time on the road. Mum didn't see anything, 
and the yard goes quiet after a little while. Mum decides it was a nothing issue and we all went back to bed. Me and my older brother slept in the room closest to the front door, but my brother was sleeping with my mum when the front door burst open sometime later that night and those heavy footsteps returned, this time on the floor of our home. I felt it pick me up out of my bed, and then it turned around and started to leave the room when my mum stopped it. I don't remember how she stopped it or if it stopped on its own. I couldn't see what was holding me. It looked like I was floating in the air on my back to me. I could feel something, but it wasn't there to be seen. My mum looked panicked, but she was calmly telling whatever this was, trying to take me, that it really didn't want to do that, and that it should give me to her and leave. And it did. It slid me into my mum's arms, and then you could feel its presence leave, and the whole house felt light again, easier to breathe and all. Mum got all of us and stuck us in the closet in her room, and that's where we slept, the night her dad passed away. Thank you for joining me tonight on the tape library. I have one final short but terrifying story to share with you. If you have any thoughts or theories on any of the cases discussed today, then please do drop a comment below. I'd love to hear them. My aunt adored her grandchildren. She'd lost her best friend and husband around the time the first of two were born, and she poured her whole heart into these kids. They adored her as well. When they stayed at her house, before they went off to bed, the three of them would pile into her big bed and talk, watch TV, tell stories, do shadows with their hands, you know, birds and things using this big lamp. Those were really special times for all of them. The girls grew up and naturally away. My aunt passed away. The day after she died, the girls stayed at her house. They both lived out of town. That night in their grief, they once again got into my aunt's big bed, like when they were little. Now this was an older house right on the beach, and the wiring had always been a little dodgy. So when the lamp flickered on, it was no big deal, they just turned it off. But then it happened again, and again, a total of five times. Frustrated, one of them reached down from the bed to unplug it, but it wasn't plugged in. Thank you once again for listening. I'll be back very soon with the story of a military operation that uncovered something that is completely out of this world. So if you don't want to miss out on that, then please be sure to subscribe. Until next time, pleasant dreams.